Hi everybody, it's Thomas here from Thomas Fitzgerald Photography and in this video I'm going to look at editing some files I shot with my Sony A6000 using Capture One. So I am using Capture One in version 11 uh, for this video, so at the time of recording this was the latest version available. And if you're using any Sony camera, uh, whether it be the A6000 series or any of the A7 series or even the A9, um, most of the tips and most of the what I'm going to be talking about in this is, is still relevant. So uh, this pretty much applies to all Sony cameras. So the first thing I want to talk about is how I have uh, Capture One set up for this. Um, because I use some settings of my own just to kind of customize the way I like to have the images and to save a bit of work. So the first thing um, is I normally have my images set to use the film high contrast curve. So if you look under the base characteristics tab in the color tab, uh, you see I have this set to film high contrast. So here the ICC profile is set to Sony A6000 generic. So again, if you're using an A7, it would be the A7 whatever version it is. Um, I prefer that film high contrast because I find the images a little flat uh, otherwise. So the other thing I have is I have a bunch of sharpening presets that I use. Um, I know um, I'm using presets and not styles in this case. So if you look under here sharpening, you see I have Sony medium, low and high. Um, in this case, I am using Sony medium. And again, for noise reduction, I also have a bunch of so settings specifically for Sony. I will make these available as a download and you will find the link in the description below. So uh, the reason I do this rather than the defaults is I don't particularly like the defaults with Capture One. I find the noise reduction is too high and the sharpening is too aggressive and it results in kind of a digitally looking image in that it looks kind of like the same kind of processing you see if it was uh, on a low end digital camera. Um, not not to diminish Capture One in any way, um, it's very capable, um, but I do find the defaults a bit, I, I just don't like them. Um, so this is the reason I use these settings. Uh, in my opinion, I, it gives a more natural look. It may bring a little bit more noise to the image, but I prefer it this way. Um, but of course, everything's up to you. Uh, if you want, you can try the settings that I have. And again, I will link to a blog post um, to where I discuss some of the settings that I use. And that will also be in the description below or you can try the presets and see what you think yourself okay so that's pretty much how i have everything set up oh uh, actually there's one more thing um i also have a, a curve um on an rgb curve it's a very very slight contrast just to darken the blacks a little because again in my opinion they're a bit set up by default and for all these things i have them set as default so if you go to the pop-up menu on any of the panels, you can go save as defaults and it will save it as a default for whatever camera you're shooting with. So in this case, it's save as default for Sony a6000 because this is for the Sony a6000. Okay, so that's pretty much how I have everything set up. So now I'm going to go through a couple of images and just show you my techniques for processing. Um, I have selected a, a a couple of shots from a recent shoot I did and there is a few different things uh, that I'm going to need to do to these so uh, it's kind of useful because it will show you a couple of different techniques um, and which I hope you'll find useful and I'll try and cover a few different areas of um, Capture One uh, in this tutorial. So to start with I have I've selected seven shots from the shoot now I might not go through all these but we'll, we'll see how we get on. Mm. Okay, so I'm going to start with this shot first, and this was shot in Dublin Harbour late at night, and uh, so a couple of things about this. So if you look here at the side of the boat, um, you can see that the highlights are getting clipped here because it was the sun was quite low and I was the, obviously the metal here is quite shiny. So if I bring the highlights in, you can see I can actually recover that quite a good bit. And another thing I want to do is the colour temperature is actually a little off on this. Um, so I was actually shooting with a different camera as well and I had the colour temperature right on that so I prefer that look but I know what the temperature actually should be so I'm just going to manually set it here. Should be four. And that's kind of more like what we were seeing on the night. So the next thing I'm going to do anyway is I'm just going to do some basic adjustments on this and a little bit of contrast, bring up the saturation ever so slightly and 
and uh, I'm bringing up the shadows a bit just so we can bring back a, some detail in the power station and if I go down here clarity I'll just add a little clarity I'm gonna add a little bit of vignette as well because it's just kind of helps focus everything but so there are a couple of issues that we need to fix as well and um, there's some dust spots here that we need to address so to do that I'm going to go over to the details panel and down at the bottom you see spot removal now one of the things to note is because Capture One is quite customizable and um, some of these panels may be in a different location if you've customized the interface over the years or if you're using a, a different interface preset. So in this case um, it's spot removal but you can also get it from the toolbar up here. Okay so I've set the radius to large and I'm setting this to spot rather than dust um, even though it probably is dust and the reason for that is it actually works better when you've got detail like this. Okay. Now this can be a little tricky. The spot removal tool in Capture One is not great. Um, to get back off it again you just click back on the hand tool. Okay, so as you can see, that did not do a particularly good job of removing this. So I can try it on the dust and see if it makes a difference. Now, see, when you use dust, it just actually blurs everything. Um, okay, so that's not going to work. So we're going to have to try a different option for that. So I'm just going to get rid of these. Um, let me just try that one more time. I'll try from a different angle. Okay, so that's a bit better. If I started from the bottom one first, it's not perfect, but it will do for the moment. Um, now, there's two other dust spots up here I can see, so I'm going to get rid of those as well. There, there. Actually, there's another one. Yes, my sensor is quite dirty and needs to be cleaned. <laughs> okay, so already that's looking better. Um, so if you want to see before, you hold down the Option key or the Alt key and click on the Reset Adjustments button. And that will show you before. So there's before and there's after. So already that's looking much better. So what I want to do now is I'm going to darken the sky. Um, and so to do that, I'm going to add a new layer. So I'm going to, I want a new empty layer in this case. And then I'm going to use the gradient to mask to draw a gradient. So we're just going to, I'm going to draw it down a little bit below the waterline in this case. And we want to go over to the exposure and we'll drop the exposure ever so slightly and increase the contrast. And we'll also drop the highlights down a bit more and bring up the saturation. We don't want to go too far with this because uh, it'll start to look a bit fake. Um, I can also use the levels and the curves tool as well. Uh, a bit more contrast here. Now, one of the other things to be aware of is because there wasn't that much detail in the sky to begin with you can actually get banding quite easily um, but even I thought that's I think that's a lot better okay so the other thing I want to do is I want to bring up some more detail in the water so I'm going to add another layer and again I want an empty layer and I'm going to use the gradient tool again and we're just going to drag up like this okay and in this case I'm going to increase the clarity just so we're adding a bit more detail I'm going to switch it to punch as you can see, that makes a big difference. And then I'm just going to go back to the background layer and just adjust my vignette a little bit more. Okay, so there's before and there's after. Okay, so let's move on to another image. Okay, so in this shot, we're going to do some of the things that we did to the previous uh, shot as well. So uh, the first thing first is I want the same color balance and I also want to get rid of this these nasty dust spots um, so I can go back here and I can go adjustments copy I want to go copy and apply adjustments so this gets a little tricky okay so I don't want exposure I don't want levels and curves all I want is the white balance and I don't want any of the details either because that's already set and don't want metadata or layers Okay, so all I want is the white balance, so I click copy. And then if I go to the next image, I can go apply adjustments. And that has applied the white balance. Okay, so again, we'll do our basic adjustments here first. I'm going to adjust the highlights, bring the highlights down a bit, because I want to kind of capture the sunset feel to this uh, a good bit. Uh, and just a basic bit of clarity. 
and again, a bit of vignette, and bring up the saturation a bit as well. So just a quick tip for you in Capture One, um, the saturation control in the main exposure panel is very similar to the vibrance control in Lightroom in that it's not a strict, it's not strictly a true saturation. It does protect certain colors from oversaturation, so it works similarly to a vibrance control. Um, if you want to use a proper normal saturation tool, you can actually get it in the color editor. And if you go down to color editor, and if you click on this last one, this will actually give you a normal saturation control. So as you can see here, the colors have got oversaturated. Um, that's just a quick tip. Okay, so again, vignette. Now I'm going to tweak the black levels ever so slightly here. And bring up my shadows just a little bit. And again, I want to add a gradient for the sky and I might darken the, the sea down a bit as well. So I'm gonna add a new empty layer and bring back our gradient tool. In this case, I just kind of want to darken the top of the sky ever so slightly. This is one of those things too, where um, you have to kind of be careful because even very small amounts can actually make a big difference. Um, I'm happy enough with that. So again, I'm going to add another gradient or another layer and another gradient. Again, I'm going to increase the clarity on this and I'm going to add punch. And again, I'm going to uh, maybe drop the exposure slightly on this as well and increase the contrast. Uh, it's perhaps a little too much though, so I'm going to drop the clarity back a bit. Okay, so then, then the last thing I want to do is fix the dust spots again. So I'm going to go back to background. And again, I'm going to start at the bottom here because it seemed to work better. And click and then get rid of these two. Back. Okay, you can see that's not working particularly well. Again, as I said, this one of the problems with this is uh, the dust spot removal tool is not great. Um, there is, I could do a, a clone layer and see if that will work. So I'm going to do that. So I want a new, actually we'll try a heel layer first. Okay, and then we want to draw a mask. And we just draw over this. And then I want to just Try and find an area that lines up. Okay, see that's not, that doesn't work particularly well either. Switch this to clone. I'll try and get it a bit closer. Oh, that's better. Okay, so that's got rid of it. As I said, it doesn't work quite as well as um, Photoshop or Lightrooms. Um, actually Lightrooms isn't particularly brilliant either. Photoshop is much better. Um, so if you have really complex dust spots, sometimes I find it easier just to do it in Photoshop. Okay, so let me just see before and after on this. So there's before and there's after. So you can see it's much more dramatic. Um, one of the things I find as well is Capture One when working with Sony files is it actually retains a lot more um, of the the color information um, when you do a lot of adjustments than Lightroom does. So I I actually had re previously edited these in Lightroom and I found I was getting solarization uh, a lot more and banding in the sky uh, a lot quicker. Um, whereas this seems to be able to handle it a lot more. Uh, and I think that's due to whatever way the both software works internally. And another thing too, uh, just to show you, the it actually keeps the sharpness quite good um, in the Sony files. And this was taken just with a kit lens as well. So uh, you probably can't see this particularly clearly on the video, but um, it's, it's actually really clear and sharp considering. Um, okay, so on to the next image. Okay, so this doesn't actually require much to be done to it, but uh, one of the things I wanted to show you is how much dynamic range is in the Sony A6000 and also how good Capture One is at recovering it. So if I drag the dynamic range down, you can see how much we're actually getting back from the sun. So that's actually kind of impressive. Um, and if I drag the shadows up, you can see it's actually recovering a good bit as well. And if I zoom in here, you can see there's actually very little noise in this considering. Um, I mean, there's a little bit of noise there, but that is to be expected because you're doing quite an extensive amount of shadow recovery here. Uh, but it is actually very clean. So um, I find that if I do this in Lightroom, it will actually be a bit noisier. So whatever Capture One is doing with its highlight and shadow recovery, it's actually doing a good job on it. So I prefer this darker. So you just want a little bit of um, 
the shadows brought back because it is actually quite nice. So again, we're just going to do some just basic edits here because this doesn't really require much. I'm going to drop the, give it a bit of a vignette as well. And maybe bring the saturation up a bit more. Again, I don't want to go too far. So there's before and there's after. In fact, I can drag this. Um, I might actually be recovering the highlights a bit too much here. Drag that back a little bit. Okay. So again, just before and after. Okay, so I can actually probably use these adjustments on the next image. So I'm going to copy everything this time. In this case, you just go copy adjustments. So if you want to select the adjustments to copy, you go copy and apply adjustments. But if you just want to copy everything, basically everything that's changed, you just go copy adjustments. Okay, so again, I'm just going to go paste adjustments. Or in this case, apply adjustments. Okay, and then I'm just going to bring the exposure up slightly. So again, if I look at before, there's before, and there's after. And I can maybe bring the highlights up, or the shadows up a bit more on this. And maybe give it a bit of clarity as well. So I say this a lot when I'm talking about processing images, but it's very easy to overdo it. So I'm always trying to... Um, I'll take it so far and then I'll dial it back a little bit. Um, and just there's another... I can see a dust spot here as well. And yes, I definitely do need to get my sensor cleaned. Okay, so the other thing that this needs is it needs to be straightened because again, it's ever so slightly off. So uh, rather than using the straighten tool, this is, I'm just going to use rotate freehand. Okay, and then I'm just going to rotate it until it looks right. And switch back to the hand tool to get out of that mode. Okay, and again before and after. Okay, so that's much better. Okay, and then this one last image. So in this case, again, it's a bit flat um, and we want to bring the contrast up a bit and also it's a bit underexposed. So again, I'm going to try using the levels on this first. Okay, and bring up our blacks as well. Okay, so straight up that's better, but uh, our sky is probably we're losing a bit in it. Um, I'm going to add some clarity here as well. Maybe a little bit of a vignette. Okay, and then we just want to add a gradient for the sky. So again, we go new empty layer, switch to our gradient tool. Bring down the highlights maybe, and bring our contrast. And again, our saturation. Okay, and again, we see our dust spot problem, so let's we'll just get rid of those. And again, there's before, and there's after. Maybe just a smidgen on the shadows. Okay, so again, before, and after. Okay, so there you have it. There is a quick look at processing some Sony A6000 images in Capture One. And as I said, most of this is just basic Capture One stuff. Um, but it also goes to show you just how much you can manipulate the images in Capture One and actually still retain a lot of the quality. It's only when you push stuff really, really far um, that you'll start to run into issues. But I also should point out that um, these the photos these photos, some of these were quite underexposed, um, so we're actually doing quite a lot of uh, recovery in these. And also, too, this is in the compressed Sony's compressed RAW format, so you may actually get um, more results from a camera that supports uncompressed RAW. Um, to be honest, though, I've never really run into any issues with this. Um, but yeah, so there you have it. So the sharpening presets that I have, um, I will make available and I will include in a link in the description below. And if you found this useful, please like this video, uh, share it and uh, subscribe to my channel. And if you subscribe to the channel, don't forget to click the little bell button because that will notify you when I post new videos. And uh, thanks everybody for watching and see you next time.